Are you in search of a pharmacy for all your medical needs? Check out my guy Jason Hu's Skylands Pharmacy and Compounding, located at 337 U.S. 46 Rockaway, New Jersey, zip code 07866, serving all of New York and New Jersey. They specialize in compounding sildenafil for male erectile dysfunction, as well as semaglutide and terzepatide for weight loss. They come to you with an amazing delivery service, so don't worry about having to come in person. Once again, check out Skylands Pharmacy and Compounding in Rockaway, New Jersey, by my guy Jason Hu, who was the first guy to buy my merch. You can call them at 973-559-7979. That's 973-559-7979. Proud partner of the DJ Sports Show on WRCR, 1700 AM and WRCR.com. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's your host, DJ Hamilton, and welcome to the DJ Sports Show here on WRCR, 1700 AM radio here in Garnerville, New York. It's a beautiful Saturday here in Garnerville, New York. Won't you say so, Matt? Absolutely so, and we, so is this show. This show is going to be an absolute blast for today. Oh, yeah, we got a great one here today. I'm feeling good today, man. Like, oh, it's just a great day today, ladies and gentlemen. We got a great guest here for you guys today. I'm going to introduce him. He is, uh, my, my, I consider him my big brother from Maryland, man. We met around a couple years ago on LinkedIn, connected. He, we've collaborated on some great podcasts over the last year and a half, and he really knows his sports. He has his own website called Wilson Way Sports Network which you guys should all go check out. He does a great job writing about the NBA and go check out his newsletter. My main man, Philip Wilson. How you doing, Philip? <laughs> My God, thanks for, thanks for having me. Oh, man. Yo, that's great. How you doing, man? I know you in Maryland calling right now. <laughs> for sure, man. I'm doing good, man. I got, got good weather out here, man. Uh, I stayed up late watching that game. You know, <laughs> honestly, if, if I didn't have to talk about the game with you, I probably wouldn't even finish it, man. That was a horrible game last night. Oh, man. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, that was a blowout, man. I was like, once it got to, like, the third quarter, I was like, all right, I don't really, it's nothing really for me to see and take notes on anymore at this point. For real, I got all the backups in, man. It's, not, it's nothing to watch. I was like, I'm like, I'm, I'm disappointed uh, just in how they played the Celtics, but, like, uh, then, then again, I'm, I'm glad the series goes on a little bit longer because I didn't want to sweep, so I guess in that, in that regard, I am happy, but I don't see it going much further than Game 5 anyway. Yeah, so, like, some notes... I took for this NBA Finals, what's been going on. So we know the Celtics, mm-hmm. they're going for their 18th title in franchise history. They're trying to break that tie yep. with your Lakers. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, my guy, Phil <laughs> Wilson's the, one of the biggest Lakers yeah, fans yeah. you'll ever find. So I know he does not that's want right. the Celtics to win. <laughs> no, nah, that's how I'm disappointed, man. That's how I'm glad. I, said, I, had, I had Mavericks in six, you know, for full, full context of my prediction. Uh, it, it, was, it was entirely because, you know, in part, not entirely, but in part, because I, I didn't want to tell the one eighteen banner, but I really did believe in that Kyrie Luca duo. I, I thought they would show up and, and really handle business, but they, they for, for the most part, haven't. So um, it just it, it's unfortunate that we were at the point now where like we're, we're expecting the Celtics to win. And game, like I said, game five is it's probably, probably going to be a close out game. Yeah, I thought because coming into this finals, we knew a title would break the you know with your rivals Lakers when they tied it back in twenty twenty yeah. in the bubble. Some people try to still criticize that title. I, I think a title is a title, man. It's still hard. You got to go through who you go in front of. I just don't think we got to oh p- uh, minimize their title from 2020. I don't like when people do that, man. Me neither. Cause it makes no sense. I mean, I mean, the only ones. I mean, think about it. The only ones who did that is the ones that you know, you know, are mad either the Magic Lakers one or Mad LeBron one or whatever. Because I'm thinking about if the Clippers had won, it would have been show, showing a totally different light. If the Heat had won, it'd be showing a totally different light. The, the Clippers will do a 3-1 lead in the second round to the Nuggets. The, the, the Heat, you know, the, they, they had a great, you know, they had a pretty good team, but, you know, they just didn't get it done. They, they had upset over the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals that year. Jimmy Butler played amazing basketball, but the Lakers just was, was too much for him. So, to me, it's just because, it, again, like LeBron won, you know, you, you know you're going to find a reason to hate on him in any kind of way you can, yeah. especially as him winning another title. So, yeah. honestly, I, I, don't, I don't even give too much credence to that when people hate, hate on that title. I mean, we, we earned it. I'm just yeah. glad we didn't get a parade. Yeah, that, that's the thing. COVID, man, it ruined it. Yeah, man. But uh, yeah. some of my takeaways from this finals, like, game one, we, we, so Chris House Porzingis, man, he's looking like Willis Reed moment, bro. Like, it looked like Willis <laughs> Reed and Bill Walton. Dude was everywhere on the court, blocking shots, getting back in transition, <laughs> altering shots. Man, he's, he is that X factor for the Celtics. He was hitting bomb threes from 35 feet out like he's Steph Curry. He was posting up in the mid post, turning over guys, facing up. Because no, no one cut, has his reach. No one could contest his shot. Mm-hmm. Seven three, seven foot six wingspan with his high arc, high release, and he was mm-hmm. he was doing everything for the Celtics. And I I did not expect him to be that impactful in the first game. 
And then, of course, Drew Holiday, Derek White doing their thing defensively and then offensively as well. Tatum struggled the first two games. He was His shot was clanging. I was like, Tatum, why are you shooting so many threes? Go to the basket. Get in your mid-range game. Get your rhythm going instead of shooting threes all the time because I know he loves either going to the rim or threes. It seems like his mid-range game, he doesn't really shoot as much or emphasize as much as he has, has in years past. I feel like this season and last season, he's been shooting a lot of three-pointers. And, and to your point, to starting out with Chris says, uh, if, if I'm going to talk about game four real quick, this was the first time I thought the absence of Chris Stabs was really shown because you, you just saw how, look, looking at the game, Luka and Kyrie didn't shoot the three very well. They, they, they was going and attacking the basket, get, getting shots in the paint in that mid-range area, from getting whatever they wanted. So to me, that was the first time you know they missed Chris Stabs, not just you know with how Luka and Kyrie were scoring. You had the, the lobs with, with uh. Derek Lively, Daniel Gaffer making making big big time plays. So this this is the first time that that uh this this first time they really were missed. And then going back to uh you mentioned Tatum, even though he didn't shoot very well in the first two games, what, what I would really pay attention to because I know he gets I feel like it's tough for him because he, whenever he doesn't shoot well, you always want to compare it to like some of the other playoff roles like in the finals of 2022 when he didn't play play the basketball. Uh, his own teammate outplayed him, Jalen Brown. But when, what I noticed in, in the first game is Tatum specifically where. He may have not shot the best, but he was very active overall in the game. Because you know, a lot of times you, you have players like say a James Harden, where, where if, if, if they're if, you know when they're not showing up, they're not doing anything for you in, in big time playoff moments. But in Tatum's case, he didn't shoot the ball well, but he was great defensively. You know, he had plays where he locked up. You know, both Kyrie or Luka when he got got him on got him on the switch. Uh, he, he was passing the ball very well, rebounding very well. So he was very involved in the game. And then w- when he needs to shoot, shoot the ball well. Uh, you know, in, in the big time moment on the road, he had a big time performance, uh, dropping 31 points in game three. So I'm not, I'm not worried about him too much. Even though I don't see him winning Font MVP. I, I thought like that might fall to the Brown, even though with the loss they had in game four, it does open it up. I was thinking about this before the game, how like in game five, you know, in, in Boston, in front, in front of that Rockets crowd, you know, and, and I, 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 I expect the Celtics to close it out. But if Tatum can go in, put him a big time performance to close it out, kind of like KG did. You know, back in 08 against us, you know what I'm saying? You know, obviously, Paul Pierce won MVP. But this is kind of just that great closeout performance to, to seal the deal. You never know. Tater Tate could come back, you know, drop 30, 30, 30 plus and win a final MVP in his own route. So I, I don't want to criticize the performance too much because I, I feel like it gets compared to so, so much how, like how he played in 2022. But overall, you know, the, the, it's just disappointing how the Celtics performed to, to not close it on game four when, they, when they've just been so dominant this whole series. Yeah, like, oh, uh, especially what uh, piggybacking off what you said. Yeah, Tatum. Yeah, like we we've seen him be capable of some monster playoff closeout games in his career. Last year against the Philadelphia 76ers, that game seven, man, woo, mm-hmm. fifty one points, bro. Yo, uh, uh, that was that was incredible. And then game six, twenty twenty two against the Milwaukee Bucks, that they were defending champions at that point. He was going toe to toe with Giannis, forty six points Tatum had on the road in Milwaukee in that ruckus crowd. Hitting three pointer after three pointer again to the rim, attacking the basket again to the foul line. He was carrying that team that year. Giannis, he was no slouch too that game. Giannis had like forty four and twenty that game. He was bro monster that game. He was a monster that series. That was one of his greatest series. I'm I'm mad we didn't see it. I, I still say to this to this day, if if not for the you know, obviously you know Giannis got hurt, Damian got hurt. And I, I know I know a lot of people talk about how I know Joe Ellen B was the one who uh, kind of made it go viral when he asked. If if the uh, Celtics, you know, got the championship was kind of given to them by the Bucks, and to me, that's kind of hard to answer in my opinion, just because of the fact with with, with you know, yes, Drew, uh, you lost Drew Holiday, uh, the defense of the Bucks was struggling, but we never got to see a healthy Bucks team in the finals, so or if she be in the playoffs at all, because obviously they lost in the first round to the Pacers. But I would have loved to see. I, I had it being a, a Bucks Celtics Eastern Conference Finals had had they been healthy. And then, and then that kind of works against the Celtics to a degree as well because you think about how, you know, now we get to talk about, well, well they played so many injured teams. They didn't play anybody. So it's like, man, if they had, if they had gone up against a healthy, a healthy, you know, Damian Giannis duo, I would have just loved to see it just for entertainment, entertainment purposes. And really that would have been one where, like, to me, that, that would have decided to change it. I, I, I still do believe the Bucs are going to be a good team next year. Um, but, but the Celtics, you know, they're, they're going to be dangerous for years to come and a lot of all the people do it together. Uh, I have to keep Derek White as well. I heard he's up for another contract, so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to, to see to see what happens and how they close things out. But um, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing um the Celtics, you know, not just in, in the next game, but seeing how they how they how they continue to dominate these next year. Because the East has been not the strongest conference obviously for a while now. 
Yeah, I think the East this year fell off. I, I remember like two years ago, though, or last year, one of those two seasons, mm-hmm. it was really good. There was some competition. This year, it kind of fell off a bit, I feel like. And I, and, and one of the points you made um, with uh, Drew Holiday, yo, Celtics got a steal on Drew Holiday in that trade, man. I was Thanks. When the when the Bucks got rid of Damian Lillard, that was my first radio episode. I remember talking about the Damian Lillard trade. I didn't really like the trade. I wasn't like – I mean, I was like, yeah, they got Lillard. But I was like – you lose your defense, perimeter defense. It's going to hurt them, and it did this season. We saw it. it. Like, they weren't the same defensively, and they struggled mightily defensively. And I know they had injuries and stuff, but their defense is one of the big reasons why they didn't have a successful regular season like they thought they would have. Imagine they still had Drew Holiday. And, mm-hmm. and, and then Middleton, of course, being injured, his injury issues, that played a part too. But, yeah, I think this the perimeter, lack of perimeter defense, Drew Holiday. Cause remember, he might not be Damian Lillard offensively, but he's still proven in this finals he can get you – 20 to 25 if your team needs it and still give you lockdown defense this guy's been a perennial all defensive team player you have the best defensive backcourt in the league and him and Derek white and Derek white's having the best off best career best year in his career by far this season career highs across the board look at the numbers he's doing it defensively and then offensively his confidence has gone way up every single season and they were key in neutralizing Kyrie irving especially the first two games in the first two games he shot 13 of 37 from the field 0 of 8 from three-point range he combined for 18 points in two games. We're talking about Kyrie, Uncle Drew, bro. This is mm-hmm. Uncle D- Bro, we're talking about the <laughs> ball handling wizard, bro. The best ball handler of all time. The best under the rim finisher of all time with a beautiful jumper. Get whatever he wants in the court. And they held him to 18 points in two games. And he didn't even make a three-pointer. And shout out to Jalen Brown, too. He's a great defender since he came to the league. That was what he was mainly known for when he first came to the league. His defense and his athleticism. And he has really taken his step up defensively this year. Last year, I think he kind of took a little step back. This year, he's been way better on both ends of the floor. You can tell he worked on that left hand, bro. Right? He's been hearing all the noise. <laughs> Yo, he, to say that, yeah, yeah he's been, he been hearing all that noise. He's like, I don't want to hear this crap no more. He said, I'm going to work on this left hand, and y'all, I ain't going to make fun of me no more. So, he ain't going to roast me. He ain't going to be on no memes, none of that. Yeah, because I used to see memes <laughs> last year, bro. Me, I know, me, you sure you have two on your algorithm. It's like, yo, they keep oh, roasting this guy. I mean, he had it coming, man, because, I mean, it just was surprising. A guy that talented, you know, that, that, that good, you know, uh, just struck, had such a glaring issue with the left hand. Cause, you know, you, you got guys, in, you know, in playing grade school ball who, who got good left hands, you know, even though they ain't that as talented, of course. But, but not, and Jen, Jen LeBron, go, going to him, man, he, he played phenomenal this year. I can't believe, I, I swear, this is why we got to be big time in media, bro, so we, we, we can earn some votes. Because there's no way, I don't think, I don't think we would have had Jalen Brown off the uh, All NBA team. You know, obviously there's a discussion of who who would you have taken off. Um, but to me, there's no way he should have been off the team. And, I, and but I, honestly, I think a few of them. I think whenever you have a time that you know you're you're, you're, you're doubted and, and and you uh are in a position to overcome it and show why you deserve to be in that spot, you've done it. As of right now, he still is my Finals MVP. Even though you know, obviously no no subject showed up in Game Four, so I don't really put put too much uh slack on on him simply for that. But he, like I said, he's been phenomenal this year, bro. Uh, he, he, he's been the best player in the playoffs. Jason Kidd mentioned trying to be messy, you know, put a little drama in it and stir the pot. Talking about who's the best player, but I, I think he has been, and, and that's no that's no discredit to Tatum. Tatum has been playing great, but great basketball as well. But Tatum, I think, I think has just been the one on both sides of the floor, just been that most impactful player. And and, and then just has has the best time moments. Remember when he waved off Tatum in Game Three and made that move, hit, hit, hit the big shot that pretty much iced the game for the for the for the uh, Mavericks and. Help help us others pull up this uh, real real lead at the time. So he's been playing some great basketball, man. Definitely, man. And then the Celtics had the best defensive rating all postseason long, according to NBA.com. Before heading into Game Four, when they allowed 122 points for the Mavericks to score, they were holding opponents to 107 points per game, which was the best in the postseason this year, according to NBA.com. So we'll see if they can get back to that next game. But Phil Wilson, we're gonna take a quick little break, ladies and gentlemen. Come back from the break. Me and Phil are gonna break down. Uh, what the Celtics need to do in game uh, five because of it. There's some things I see on this, the stats on ESPN. Mm-hmm. Man, they got, they, they really <laughs> need to work on coming into game five. And then we're going to really talk about uh, where do Tatum and Brown, where would they rank among wing tandems in NBA history if they were to bring a championship? Ladies and gentlemen, listen to DJ Sports here on WRCR, 17 to AM radio. We're going to take a quick break, get a word from our sponsor, and play a little music. We'll be back in about a minute. Are you in search of a pharmacy for all your medical needs? Check out my guy Jason Hu's Skylands Pharmacy and Compounding, located at 337 U.S. 46 Rockaway, New Jersey, zip code 07866, serving all of New York and New Jersey. 
They specialize in compounding sildenafil for male erectile dysfunction, as well as semaglutide and terzepatide for weight loss. They come to you with an amazing delivery service, so don't worry about having to come in person. Once again, check out Skylands Pharmacy and Compounding in Rockway, New Jersey by my guy Jason Hu, who was the first guy to buy my merch. You can call them at 973-559-7979. That's 973-559-7979. Proud partner of the DJ Sports Show on WRCR, 1700 AM and WRCR.com. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host, DJ Hamilton on DJ Sports Show. We are back here on WRCR 1700 AM Radio with my guest, Phil Wilson of the Wilson Way Sports Network, talking the NBA Finals between the Boston Celtics and Dallas Mavericks. So, Phil, we, so we, got, uh, we got the Game 5 coming up on Monday. The Celtics lost last night's game to the Mavericks, 122-84. What are some things you're looking forward to in Game 5 that the Celtics need to clean up on from Game 4? Well, I mean, the obvious thing you kind of touched on before we went to the break, uh, it's their defense. You, you can't give up 122 points. Uh, and, and it's just not your style of basketball. You know, they've given up in their three wins. They gave them under 100 points. So obviously, that, that's how they improve. And then, of, of course, you know, the, with, with the loss of Chris Stapps, you know, we, we got to see how, how, how that might, you know, play, play, play a factor. But to me, uh, obviously, the obvious factor is you got to shoot the ball better. When, when the Celtics don't shoot the ball well, simply from three, they don't win games, you know, um, with how the blowout went. You know, they, they added a couple threes at the end. Uh, they, overall, they had 14, 14 threes 40, on 41 shots. I think it would be at 34%. But you could, you could just tell they just didn't come out with the mindset of uh, just, of looking to close it out. You know, you, you could tell with, with the Mavericks that they, they had the door shut out from the beginning when, when they came with that, just that desperate energy to, close, to, to keep their series alive, to keep the season alive for them. But what I look for specifically – you know, I, I think to me this is Tatum's moment. I mentioned earlier about how like, if, if he's going to win Final MVP, uh, obviously through the series as of right now, I, I was giving it to Brown, Jalen Brown. But to me, this is Tatum's big moment. You're at you're at home, game five in the closeout game. I, I believe the Mavericks are, are going to come out on fire once again. I think Luke is going to come out big time like he did in the first half of uh, game game four, got some 25 points in the first half. So to me, I, I look for Tatum. Tatum to kind of do what he did in a, in the past uh, couple games where he had, he had hot first half starts. Obviously, just the second half, there was just uh, the the Mavericks just kept too, too much too much momentum, and, and um, there's no reason to keep the starters, starters in the game. But to me, I think this is Tatum's moment. I, I think that this, it's time for him to close it out in front, front of that you know that that Boston home crowd and, and have a signature signature finals performance. Uh, I, I think I think with um with the way with the way that he's played, he's he's, he's due for it in, in this kind of moment. Obviously, it would change so much about like this is his narrative and how he's viewed. But um that that's what I think about number one in this game five. I know you mentioned their uh, shooting, but one thing I also want to mention is they got to do a better job rebounding. Yo, they mm-hmm. they got manhandled on the boards last night and in the paint. They got rebounded 52 to 31 to the Mavericks. 13 Ridiculous. offensive rebounds the Mavericks had, and eight of those offensive rebounds came in the first half. Eight of them. You can't be allowing a team to get basically one-third of their offensive possessions to, to, to have a second-chance opportunity, especially when you have dynamic two-way, I mean two-way, two-offensive explosion players, scorers, and Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. You can't give them another opportunity to get more into the rhythm. And that's what the Celtics allowed last night. And then defensively as well, they got rebounded 39 to 27 on the Mavericks. And that's where missing Pixar's Porzingis due to injury plays a key role because he is that key guy when it comes to rebounding, protecting the rim, altering shots. I know Al Horford is great, but he's at an elder state's part of his career. He's 38, 39 now. This ain't Al Horford from five years ago, or Atlanta Al Horford when he was in his prime. He's not. He he he's more of an off the bench type of guy now. He's gonna get tired later on in the game, and he it kind of showed in game four that why they need Porzingis, and it kind of sucks that he's injured because he was playing so great in the first game or two for them, and he was a big key of why they won those first two games before he went out with game three. And game three, I blame Luca as well for the Mavericks. Those turnovers, the silly fouls, like that wraparound foul on Jalen Brown that had him fall in. The lunging foul against Peyton Pritchard and that blocked that block foul he had against Jalen Brown or what he thought that was going to be a charge or what. And then barking at the refs. I feel like game three, I feel like he wished he could get that one back because I love Luka. I've been following him since he was 13, 14, yo. I've been, I knew he was going to be him. Like, I knew he was going to be that guy way before he got into the NBA. Like, when he didn't go number one, I was shocked. But the one thing I've always said, he needs to stop whining after every call. It's, that's the only thing that's holding him back from reaching that next, next level I know he can get to. Because he has everything, bro. He's done NBA first team every single year of his career, aside from his rookie season. He's been an MVP conversation since his second year in the league. He's done everything mm-hmm. you could think of except for one MVP in the championship. 
He's that talented. I want to see him mature even more so we can see that Luka next level get unlocked. I, I just want to see him play better defense. Yeah, that, yeah, that too. I was like, he needs to get in better shape. He, he needs to get in better shape. When his first two seasons, he was slim. His first two years, he looked – that was Luka in shape. Ever since his third year, he's been, like, fluctuating. One time he looks in shape. Another time he looks a little more doughy. Hookah Luka, man. <laughs> but, but again, four, he, 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 was, he was much more active. I feel like he, he, uh, he bounced back very well, not just offensively. You know, we, know, we know he can score, and that's never a concern with, for Luka. But to me, to me, it's just how much more assertive he was defensively. He wasn't a guy that just was getting abused on defensive end. We're, we're giving up, you know, a record amount of blow bys. It feels like you know, every, every game. He was more active than defensively. And I, and I feel like that's where the team really responded because this, this was the best. I was like game four. This was the best Mavericks performance probably of their of their whole uh, you know playoff run so far. Only giving up eighty four points. If you can if you, if you can bring in that kind of level of effort in the game five. That's you can make a make a series interesting going to game six possibly for uh, to, to keep the series going. Even though I don't see it going because again they're down three zero. Uh, I'm not gonna act, act like it's gonna be some dramatic you know conclusion to this, this series uh, as far as like you know them them keeping it going on, but. If if you can bring that same level of energy, especially he's talking about Luca, uh, he he's a star. He he's a guy. You know they they follow his lead. If he can bring that same level, level of defensive intensity going into a game five, that's when you could potentially have it be interesting. You know going to a, you know, a game six back in Dallas to try to force a game seven. Exactly. And then the Celtics, like we're talking about a team. This ain't the Minnesota Timberwolves. This team is elite. Has elite one on one defenders. They're starting five at every position. You don't have to worry about the Celtics. Don't need to worry about blitzing and helping over like the Minnesota Timberwolves. Timberwolves were a better defensive unit, but they don't have better one-on-one defenders. Yeah, yeah. Anthony Edwards is a great one. He's a great defender. Jay McDaniel's, but uh, Rudy Gobert is a liability because you get him on the switch with a guard that has any quickness and could get by you. He he, you're gonna go blow by him because he can't guard the perimeter. He's more of an in the paint old school '90s big man. He's not the new age mm-hmm. big man that could move their feet on the perimeter, close out on guys. No, that's a liability right there. That's why Minnesota got exposed that series because Dallas, with their guards and their wings, could shoot and all that, blow by him whenever he tried to close out because he's not going to be able to keep up with them. Celtics, on the other hand, for Zingas, he can move his feet a little bit more. When he's healthy, he is, he's better at moving his feet a little bit better than Rudy Gobert. And he's still a good shot blocker, too. And then you have guys like Drew Holiday. You, he, he can go on an island against anybody to defend. You don't have to worry about him. Derek White, same thing. Jalen Brown is no slouch defensively. He even thinks he should have been all defense this year. And then J- and Jason Tatum, he's a solid defender. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I think, and that's the thing. It's all matchups. You know, yeah. the the, the uh, uh, Celtics got so many guys they can take and throw at the Celtics. And, and the difference, you know, with the with the with the Timberwolves, you mentioned them. The, the, the Timberwolves they had length, but but the but the uh, like guys like Drew Holiday, Derek White, you know, they, they, they play you a lot stronger. They play you better straight up. Uh, especially for, when, in regards to how they match up with Luka and Kyrie, and then just that versatility of how you, you know, no matter who you switch to, there's a guy who can guard just as good. You know, say for example, in uh, in that Timberwolves series, you know, uh, when you got the switch, you got to go bear on the island, and that's how you got Luka able to go in his bag, you know, then his barbecue chicken, hit a step back three over over over, over go bear, win that game. I believe it was game two, and and, and this game against uh, the Celtics, that doesn't work as effectively. So we, so we got to see. How that happens in Game Five, which is pretty much why I have I have thought is winning because I chalk up this performance to a, to a one off. You know, obviously, you know, no no one wants to play that bad uh, and, uh, with a, a, a historical loss. But I'm not worried about the Celtics as a whole because we've seen them give up. You know, games in the series when we're like, oh, why didn't they sweep? You know, going back to uh, the first round against the Heat, they gave up the game, the, game. the Cavaliers gave up the game. So I, I chalk it up, chalk it up to them. You know. They gave up that one game, you know, disappointed because of how they lost versus just them losing the game, but uh, how they lost the most important fact. But I, this, this is part of why I set them to close out and, you know, come back focused for game five. And also another thing I want to mention, uh, well, the lack of no Porzingis in the middle due to injury, uh, the points in the paint. Did you see the difference, yo? Oh, man. Crazy difference. 60 points in the paint for the Mavericks, 26 for the Celtics. Mm-hmm. That is unacceptable. <laughs> you can't do that if you want to win a championship. You can't. That just can't happen. That just can't happen on that's any that's level. Mr. Luka, I said that. You know, Mr. Luka, Mr. Luka was I mean, Mr. Luka, Mr. Chris that was a big deal because, you know, that's how they were to do that. There's no way if Chris Stats was in the game that happened. Because if you look at the game, Luka didn't hit any threes. I believe he was 0 for 8. Kyrie was 1 for 6. So, so usually you think, okay, if Chris Stats is in the game, and, and, and then you're not going to get in the paint, you got to shoot the three well. Cause you're not going to be able to score within the paint like, like that. So, with them out the game, that's how you get those times where they can attack the basket at will. You have Gafford, Lively, uh, getting their lobs to the basket off that pick and roll. Without Chris, that, it, it makes the series a lot more interesting. But either way, 
I still see the Celtics closing it out. Exactly. Phil, before we before we let you go, uh, quickly make your prediction. Who you got winning Game Five? Uh, again, again, I'm gonna I'm stick with the prediction. I, I'm, I'm gonna take the, uh, as I said, the Celtics Game Five. It's, it's gonna be a close game. I'm, I'm not gonna act like the, the Mavericks are gonna lay an egg in Game Five. But they're, they're fighting for their, for their playoff lives. But I, I, I just don't see them giving up giving up another game. The Celtics have been too dominant. They've, they've been, you know, they're, they're a bad match for the Mavericks as we talked about earlier. And and uh, with, with the way things are shaping up. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say Tatum going to drop 30-plus. You know, have a big-time performance. Uh, probably have a double-double with 10 rebounds. And I, and I think it, it might be just enough to get him that final MVP. Okay. Oh, okay. You know, it's when they had Celtics in six, but I think they close it down in five. I think they do it. And I think Tatum, mm-hmm. if he has a big game, he'll get finals MVP. So, yeah, I got Celtics in five, man. Phil, before you go, quickly tell the people where they can find your work, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Check me out at Wilson with Sports Network. That's philwillsn.com. That's my website. Also, also check check me out on my on my uh, my newsletter, Wilson Way Sports newsletter at, on LinkedIn. You also follow me on, on Instagram at Philwell twenty four. Uh, also check out my podcast, uh, Wilson Way Sports podcast. Uh, you can find it on Spotify. So you see all my work. Uh, got, got, uh, my, my latest podcast has, I just dropped actually talking about Game Three of the NBA Finals with uh, one of my good friends, Miguel Mike Medina. Check that out. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I want to say just thank you for having me so much. Uh, I had a great time talking ball with you. And uh, look forward to doing this again, man. Oh, yeah. Pleasure, man. It's funny how I got you on your first ever podcast a year and a half ago, and then now your first radio appearance. <laughs> man, credit to you, man. That, that, that's, that's why you, you, you've you been great for me, bro. It's, it's always that, That's how much what I love most about this industry, the, this, the whole sports media industry. I just, obviously, I love basketball. You know, I love the game. I love talking basketball, uh, and I love learning about it every day. But I think it also the people, the people you meet in this industry is just amazing. You know, all, all the people that you can learn from, whether they're younger or older, everyone sees the game in their own unique way. And, and everyone just loves basketball, and it's so it's easy to talk talk uh, when you got talking about you know sports and the people you love. Oh yeah, thank you, Phil, for coming on, man. Really appreciate you, my guy. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you for having me. See you soon. Yes, sir. See you soon. Well, yes, ladies and gentlemen, that was my guy, Phil Wilson, the Wilson Way Sports Network. He is. I've, I've met him on LinkedIn a couple of years ago. We really started really connecting though like a year and a half ago. Make sure you guys check out his work. We had a great conversation today. Ladies and gentlemen, before we close out the show, I just want to quickly say, in honor of my four years of D-Day Sports Show 622, I'm, I'm launching a big poll. Everybody I ever interviewed, 24 people, in honor of my Kobe year next month, 24 years old, 24 guests I've done through the years, and four years of D-Day Sports Show. So make sure you guys go vote. It'll be on my D-Day Sports Show homepage. It'll be on my LinkedIn. It'll be on my link and Instagram and everything. So make sure you guys go vote. I'm doing this for audience engagement and for the, for the culture, you know? <laughs> But coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, we got Tough Times with Lou Young with the latest on the weather climate change. (laughs) (laughs) It's been your host, DJ Hamilton, here at the DJ Sports Show here on WRCR's Hamilton AM Radio. And I'll see you all next time. Have a great Saturday, everybody.